morning gang everybody see me hear me good to go hey uh, just want to remind everybody of our disclaimer I'm here for educational purposes only I'm not here to give investment advice just an FYI Monday to everybody Just uh, looking at some charts. There's a little bit of energy early, but it kind of died off. But we've got um, about four or five minutes until we get some new levels in, in gold. Gold's looking like wants to go higher. We'll play that bias until otherwise. And that means we take um, breakouts and fades on the uh, structure lines, strike lines. You can see our trade. You know, this morning, or potential trade, a little pullback candle, even this little blip here would have probably got you 2468 um, close to target. So that's what we're looking for as an example. I need to get this chart so you guys can see it at least. The oil, it's been chopping below the, the strike line all night. You can see how impactful that line is. It's nailed it to the tick. Three times at least so anyway we don't have any news this morning that I'm aware of let's double check it well, we have Empire State Manufacturing so it's a medium impact at 630 probably not going to be anything major Just keep an eye out for that Tomorrow, nothing crazy. Import prices, 6.30, but anyway, next couple days, not much news, so we'll see. What's new? Anybody have any questions or comments? Uh, levels are coming, making good progress. Made good progress over the weekend. So I would say within a couple weeks for sure.
So we're waiting for some bubbles here. Looks like our midpoint's around 31. We've got a strike line up here at 34. The close of this bar will be when it calculates on this chart. It looks like we're going to have a strike line here at 34. So we'll see if it wants to break out above that. Or pull back into it and fail. Hasn't plotted yet. It will as soon as the this bar closes. At 33 even, when it pushes through 33 even, it'll plot. Some volume laying up here at 36. Here's our strike line. So we're going to either look for a pullback into this line and a fail or a push up, pull back into it and the second leg up to our target. That's the game plan. We've got um, some oversold action on the short term bar, which is our current bar. And overbought on the bigger bar. So we'll see how it plays out. There's not much spark in uh, gold this morning, or uh, yeah, gold, which is kind of lazy. So in the meantime, I'm just looking at the market analyzer. Someone mentioned that rollovers tomorrow. So we'll roll, we'll roll over when we see the volume um, outpace the the new volume outpace the old. We'll keep an eye on this. It'll happen probably today or tomorrow, probably tomorrow. But there's no rush to do it today. So we're just kind of taking it easy here. We have oil chopping. We've got gold uh, being lazy. So there's nothing to do. You go right here to get the market analyzer. File, new, market analyzer.
then you have to go in and kind of tweak it. I can go through tweaking it if you guys want to. So we've got a lazy day as far as action, price action. It's slow. Got bottom of the hour in about four minutes. Looking for a potential trade in gold. The bigger bar is kind of looked like this. Had a nice push up. Now it's retracing a little bit. Our moving averages are pointed up. Our regression channels pointed up. Everything's pointed up. That doesn't mean it's going to go up. It just kind of gives us an idea of what direction it could go. So we'll take that into consideration, but it's not our holy grail. So I just made mine two different, um, you can go in here, properties, um, I don't think I changed anything in here, and then uh, go to columns is the big thing, and you can pick what you want, I just want the name, of the instrument we're trading and the volume, daily volume, that's it. So you find it in this big chart here, or this list. Double click it, pops it down into this box and then apply it. And then there you have it. Simple stuff, you're welcome. Now, when somebody asks in the room how to do that, you can be the the man, step up and say, hey, I know how to do that. You do this, 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 and this. So Trader Tim's going to be our market analyzer go-to guy. So, not that we're going to pursue it or anything, but I have something I wanted to show you as far as a little trade that I kind of stumbled on um, over the weekend. Something new, just to watch. Because like I said, we're not just going to sit here and be boring and monotonous. Yeah, we are, but when we trade, we are. But when we're um, looking for new things and looking for things to shake it up, to keep things fun and interesting, this is what we do. Have um, the smooth indicator get to extremes? You place an order at the at the close of this bar, going in the direction that the smooth indicator wants you to go. So right now it's showing that it's oversold. So we want to go long. So the close of this bar would be thirty three four. So we put our order in either right here, or at the close at the one tick above it at 35. We just let it sit there. 
Now, if this bar decides it wants to push down again, we'll move it down to keep moving it down to and then eventually when you look back in time, eventually the turn bar or double tail and it goes, I don't know, four to five, six ticks, sometimes more. So I thought it would be fun to see and kind of track the ability of that trade. and see if we can pick up some scalps here and there. Kind of cool, so a 35 would be your entry on this. This is a, just as a talking point, no trade, you know, don't, don't get confused. Um, but another thing that would be interesting is to track those trades off of the levels. And what I've noticed is they're really pretty sweet. Like this one here, this morning, early. This bar right there. Just as a heads up and to watch something. So I don't know if you guys um, remember from Friday what we're supposed to be watching. I gave you, gave you guys an assignment. And it had to do with the smooth indicator. Here's another assignment. You guys are going to kind of watch these trades when they happen, when they get to extremes. We'll track them. You know, maybe it's something we look for. Three ticks, five ticks, I don't know. It's just an idea. Maybe it doesn't work at all. But just looking back, it looks like it works. Another thing we need to watch too is does it matter where the bigger bar like if they're in lockstep with each other like if they're uh, like this one here at 49 that one there They're both in extremely oversold. Well, not extremely. They're both oversold. So eventually it closed down. So I don't know. It's just something to watch. So this entry would have been 35, right? Because we will say it's one tick above the, the close. Uh, no, I haven't done too much with OCO. I have in the past, but not in, the, in um, the past five years. So it's been a while. I'm not even sure if I know how to put on an OC order anymore. So at 34, we have an iceberg short. And we've got um, 33.2 We've got a short here. 
order filled. So we're short oil or um, gold. I'm sorry, that was kind of quick. Kind of had this roll over here. Let's see if we can get down to um, 32.4. Our stops at uh, thirty four one. Hope you guys caught that. It was kind of quick. I got caught up chit chatting and looking at other screens, kind of reversed on us. But you can see it went right to our. Strike line, smacked it, and then rolled over. So 32.4, we've got uh, nothing as far as volume really below us. 31.8 we do. Kind of down here at these swings, kind of at these swings. Nothing even at this swing low. Target. So there's our target. So when you fade the strike line, your ultimate target is the midpoint. So I'm going to move that up. We've also got a strike line from overnight. Um, this might give us a little confluence there. So, And that's about where that volume is. So we're at break even. Um, we've got a runner going. Anybody catch that one? That was kind of the. It was really fast. All right. So some of you guys were quick on the trigger. So here's our indicator. It kind of pushed down into oversold again, right? This one went two, four, say five, maybe, yeah, five, because it didn't push through this bar. Just an FYI. Um, someone asked my settings. Three, thirteen, one is what they are but I've been toying with it. So we've got um, the smooth rolling over on the bigger bar. We were at the top of the you know upper quadrant of the channel. Looking for maybe a midpoint. Since we're in an uptrend, maybe pull back to the midpoint, which is 31.2 which I mentioned um, 31.8 is where we've got 76 contracts, with anything major, just that it's there. And everything else is in between the 30s and 40s, maybe some 50s. Yeah, so that is a, is a good second you know, second wave double tail right there. So I'd like to um, just push down to our runner target. You know, 31.8, we do have some volume, which is, I'll just mark this here. Just to mark that, just so you can see it. So let's see if it keeps pushing down or if we're going to get a pullback. If this was just a, you know, nice little retracement on the bigger bar and a push up. 
So our next trade would be something above this strike line. If it wants to take out, you know, all this stuff here. And it'd be great if this would be another little wave down and our stop held that. Um, good question. I must have put it in. I was trying to be quick and I must have was off a tick, I guess. Looks like. Um, well, I mentioned it earlier. There's two possible scenarios. Either we push down and pull back into it and fade it, or we take a breakout. Those are the room trades right there. Those are two bread and butters. So yeah, I did kind of mention it, and then I noticed that it it pushed up really quick and then started to, to fail. So I put the put the order in and actually missed it by a tick myself. I think I jumped the gun as far as a tick, but We'll see what happens here. We have just by looking at volume and stuff, it looks like it should push down. If if this will break, it should push down into this, you know, lower zone down here in the 31s somewhere. So this is my trade. Uh, this is just some volume here, thirty-one eight. It's just it's seventy-five contracts. It's nothing major, but there could be a hesitation because we're also running into these um, little swings over here. Um, but it's according to just looking at the volume and where stuff is sitting it looks like it should push down into the th low mid 31s so hopefully we held this pullback and we pushed down into our target down here we do have a confluence so i'm expecting that to probably get a bounce but we've got some slow motion activity or action, but we're going in our direction, so that's good. So 33.3, so on the seven Tom bar, we're at 34.1 still for our stop. So clear up here. I'm going to keep mine at break even. My ATM. Uh, there's a video about it, but I'll show it later today if we get. Uh, I'll help you, Frank. It's super easy. Matter of fact, I'll just start talking right now. But as we manage this trade, so you want to hit these little three three dots. Okay, that'll pull up a box. And then you need to, need to figure out how many contracts you're trading. If it's two, one, three, hundred, whatever it is. So I have I basically have two targets. I lay one out at twenty five, and then I take two um, two off at ten. Both stops are at ten, and I lay this out at twenty five just so it pushes it out in front of me and then I can drag it to wherever I want my target to be. I mean, I could drag it clear down into next week if I wanted to, but I don't. I usually lay it out here where I think it's going to push to. So then I guess the big thing is, is you have to go into custom. You don't really need to do it on the first target. I just 
do, but I'll do it here. You need to go prop it trigger 10. Um, trigger is 10, and I have it go to plus one. So I go to break even plus one, that covers my commission. And then I hit OK. And you can have it zero if you want to go to break even. You can have minus one. You can play with whatever you'd like. And then I don't have any auto trails built in. I like to do it myself. So then when that's done, you have to right click in here and manage and then save it as a name. And I get pretty specific on how you name it because eventually you're going to have a bunch of different ATM strategies and it's easy to between them if you have them named properly. So there you go. So we've got uh, 32, three. Yeah, like I said, there's not much as far as big blocks or anything abnormal below us or above us. 30, 35.4 I've got a block of sellers but oil still chopping I'd love to see gold melt down here and give us a good little runner down to our extended target and you can see I've got these markers on here I'm gonna remove these down here see we have a confluence of levels so that's where you need to really respect it because you, you will get a bounce there especially on a small bar even if it's just one bar, um, you know, 10 ticks probably. That's just a wild guess, but at least a bar or two. It needs to drop. It needs to break this little, this little swing low here. It's matching up with this little swing high. So this this blue line is just marking some volume that it's no longer there. So they were obviously spoofing. So it's there, I guess. It's just gotten a little bit smaller. You know, there's a little bit of volume trying to protect this um, swing low, but there's nothing abnormal. So I'd love to see this thing give up um, the swing low and push down into the 31s. <clears throat> So chop, chop, chop. So we've got 11 minutes until top of the hour. Eleven minutes to the top of the hour. Crude is it definitely in the chop zone?
So hopefully this little swing high and a stop. Swing high 31, 32. Yeah, a couple ticks over the swing high. Hold this pull back. And then we just uh, lay down and run into these uh, levels down here, this confluence. We've got an iceberg above us at 32.8, which is good for us. Hopefully that'll keep the lid on it. Wear these buyers out a little bit. And... So eight minutes to the top of the hour. We've got our first trade locked in. We've got a runner um, in profit. It's kind of chopping. We want it to give up this low, 32.3. Push down into our targets down here, our runner target. And the reason I have this here is because of the confluence between levels. It could easily melt through that. But... Oil just kind of broke out of its chop. We've got, um, I don't know, eight, seven, eight minutes until pit open. We're starting to see um, this uh, in the smooth get up into the oversold or overbought. Sorry, my brain is having a hard time thinking opposite this morning. Same as the bigger bar. So we'll see if that thing will roll over. If it, if it doesn't and stop us out, then it is what it is. Within a tick. Looks like we're going to get nailed. Maybe not. Some of you guys probably did because it was off a tick. Stop filled. All right, there we go. So we're out of our gold trade. And we'll see if this wants to roll over again. We still have this potential to push down into these levels. I just like to um, lock in some profit and then keep my runner in profit um, with my stop at, at plus one. I know some people loosen it, everything up. I just keep mine fairly tight. So re-entry on this would probably be 32.6-ish. 32.6. It's a close of the bar. So 32.6 would be a re-entry short. I 
we got stopped to almost to the tick, but that's all right. But we do expect this to roll over and push down into the low 31s. It's kind of slow. We've got top of the hour in four minutes. Re-entry at 32.6. which is close of bar. Here's one of our potential uh, smooth trades setting up just as a, as a watch. 34 would be in. So gold, we need to adjust 32.8 would be next in or at the close of the bar. If this thing wants to roll and if not, then we get a push. Because you can see it's starting to kind of follow suit with the big bar. Um, if we do push up, we've got a continuation trade, bigger bar, which would obviously throw one on the smaller bar. We just need a little pullback into that strike line. Getting a little overbought here temporarily. You know, overbought on the bigger bar or 11 Tom bar. Uh, no, I a couple times a week, probably. I think we had one or two. I think we had two last week. So like I said before, it's up to you guys if you want to um, you know, take profits on your runner earlier or just do all or all in, all out type of thing. I do the runner because that's where you make your money, even though it doesn't happen every single time. But the times it does, it pushes you a little bit. But does that outpace your taking all out? You know, so that one we would have banked 300 versus 210. So it's your guys' call. I like the runner. And it all comes down to how you manage it. If you loosened up your stop and gave it some wiggle room, then you would give up you know, some of this early money that you made on your two, well, you'd have potential, to, you know, to hold a pullback. So we've got pit open in, in one minute. Yeah, that's the whole point, I guess, is winner's run. You know, this was kind of a counter trend trade. And on the bigger bar, we're going against the grain. So 33 is the next entry. We're just going to keep trailing this up. And if it hits the strike line and fails and rolls over, we're going to be in. And if it doesn't, we're going to wait for a breakout, pull back, and then a continuation off of that strike line. So we've got a, we've got a, a scenario for every occasion. We're just going to have to wet, let it play out. So waiting on some calculate close of this bar. There's our new line right at the strike line. Oil.
opened right at the strike. So we've got oversold on the bigger bar. Over, you know, pushing over bot. So let's see if we can get a little pullback. Hold this 32. Get rid of this little pretend trade. We're not pretending. So let's see if we can get a pullback to hold 32. And push up in months. Gold's acting like it wants to roll over here. 33 will be our entry short. Hopefully it'll take it down into the 31s now. Waiting for a pullback in oil to potentially go. You can see our um, smooth indicators a little bit overbought. That could signal a little pullback into our level and then I do think oil is going to go up today um, just by looking at the chart, but that doesn't mean anything. We're not trading on what I think. Time to take trade off? No. We're going to enter at 33. Short. Gold. If we push above the strike line, then yeah, we will take the short off. As long as we hold this 34, we're going to look for it to roll over because we know what happens when it hits the strike and fails. It rolls on us. Remember our um, bigger bar, hundred or two hour, 120 minute. You can see we pushed above that moving average, and we've just kind of uh, been chopping. Friday we had a breakout, but we're starting to retrace a little bit. Fifty percent of that bar is right around that 31 half or 31 eight or 31 five. You know, right around in here. So. That's why you saw that volume there, I think, maybe. So here's our pullback. Let's see what gold wants to do here. If it pushes up another bar, let's see, another bar will be tagging the strike line. But once we push above that, I'll take this, this uh, short off. But in the meantime, I'm keeping it right here because if it rolls over, we're going to be in short. 33 even. So we have a confluence of our smooths, both overbought. Let's see if we can get this thing to roll over. Push down into our mid to low 31s, like we spoke about earlier. Let's 
Oil pretty slow here. I've got some sellers hanging out in between us and the sign, which is kind of keeping a lid on it here. And then a few sellers hanging out above this swing high. Here's our pullback in oil. So we've got an, a long in at 42. Now at 40. And if we have another close, we're going to 38. See if we can push up. If it decides to roll over, then we'll have to look to change our tune here. So we could potentially have two trades going on. That's why I like ATM strategies. So we've got some buyers um, starting to stack up here. We'll see if it holds it. If not, then we'll look for a break of this strike line and a pull back and then a push down into target. But what I'm kind of expecting is, since it's been kind of range bound, um, a push back up into these levels, into the 55, 60, into these levels. So we'll Net on crude oil, negative on gold. So they're both negative. Crude oil is barely negative. It's just um, kind of chopping. Some pretty good volume stacking up above us here, but if it pops, it's going to take us with it. A couple hundred contracts above and below. Yeah, I can do up to 10 with where I'm at as far as profit. And thanks for pointing. But yeah, I can, I can trade up to 10. I'm in good shape. So we've got things in slow motion here. 38 is the close of this bar. We do have a divergence. So I'm going to leave this order on and keep ratcheting it down as long as it holds this swing low. Looking for a quick little pop in oil.
equity equity in probably 16 minutes. Order filled. Long oil. Stop at 28. First get 48. I've got my stop at 28, which I'd like, I should probably put it down below this. I will just to give it some room, not room, not in that it needs extra room, but we have a, um, a low here that, um, I want to have protect. We've got a quick little push. Let's see if we break this 43. There's some 160 contracts sitting there. Let's see if we can pop through it. Just looking back at gold here. I'm gonna take um, one more lift up, 32, 33.2 on gold. I'm going to take gold trade off. Now, if we don't get a breakout here soon, I will scratch this trade. I'm not going to sit here and watch this chop and then eventually leak down and take us out. Just watching volume and seeing which way this thing wants to roll. We are uh, delta, cumulative delta um, positive now, which is always a good sign. We've got somewhat of a confluence here. So we'll just kind of assess where this is going if we get up here. You know, ultimately your target would be 50, 56 right at the mid. Gold is um, kind of reacting at this to this chop over here that we had this morning. So it still might roll over, but I took order off. See if oil will pop this little swing high here and put the target. I'm going to start leaking some of this um, risk out of here. I want to move everything up to um, 34.
want this to break out it should push us right to target and we'll have to look at this 48 here because um, we might get a little potential resistance here at this swing high We need this 43 to break, give us a little push. Some of you can take profit if you want to. Um, I'm gonna hold out for this first target, but it's tempting. Yeah, I know there's some sellers hanging out right here. So I'm just going to close this out. I'm not going to think around. I don't want it to leak down and take us out. So I took that off. If it breaks, we missed it or we got a little bit. I'm going to watch gold here and see if we pull back to the strike and see if it wants to continue to push. Or if it's going to roll over. Are you any of you guys still in uh, oil? Okay, well, good luck to you. It's, you'll be you'll have a good trade. Hopefully, it'll push right through there and rock and roll. I was just trading on gut here. My gut was just feeling feeling that uh, it's gonna roll over, but. It's wrong 99% of the time. You know, my gut's usually spot on, but I'm not sure when it when it comes to picking highs and lows, it's spot on. My point is, is I was just banking stuff. I could see some volume sitting up here. It really wasn't. They're starting to uh, chew away at it, but it's absorbing quite a few buyers. But there's some buyers stacking up below too, so. Either way is a good trade. Yeah, that's trading. But we do have a confluence up here. 57 to 60. But we don't really have much volume to support it. All of our volume is down here. So we're getting a pullback into our strike line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a buy order. Thirty-four is the close. I'm going to put a buy order above this swing high here, thirty-four nine. It's going to be one tick above the close of the bar. If it decides it wants to come off of this and push and if not then it not it doesn't so if this pops it'll push up into this confluence or up into these targets for sure but if it doesn't, then it doesn't. You're not out anything, I guess. But the more sell, uh, the more um, so every time it gets pushed up here, there's more sellers that add to those two um, 30, uh, 48, 49. So we got a potential long on um, gold if we hold this 34 level. I'm thinking this could be 
potentially could be the top. I'm going to take this order off in gold. So right now we don't have any orders. Uh, we took our quick profit in oil. We had a good trade in gold. Runner got stopped even. But so far so good. So let's keep an eye on this stuff. This could be a good short here off of the strike line, but we did push above it a couple times, you can see. So being cautious as far as just because we do have some profit banked. I want to be cautious now. We're not going to be out here some gunslinging. Not that we ever gunsling, but sometimes trades just happen and you start putting them on and taking them off. And next thing you know, you have a couple, three good ones, and then you have that fourth one that nips you. So you got to be a little more cautious and on higher alert once you get some profits banked. Because at the end of the day, it's all about protecting it. So you guys making money today, I'm assuming, right? 3.13.1 is the setting, Steve. So 34, so there's this potential long here off the strike line, but there are buyers linger or sellers lingering up here. So it would be 34.6 would be the entry. Gold. I'm not putting the order on right now. I'm not I'm not sure why. Well, number one reason is we're over we're overbought and we're overbought. That's my reason. My gut saying, easy, big guy. Easy. Uh, the trade would be long. That's the thing. It could go either long or short. We're overbought. So maybe it's going to go short, but it's acting like it doesn't want to go short. <sighs> so cumulative delta is still negative. I mean, it's went from kind of medium sized negative to break even to negative. So when you get kind of um, multiple angles of where it's going to go, that's usually when I kind of take a step back and let it decide on its move and then take the next setup instead of trying to predict which way it's going to go. So we've got equity open at five in five. A mountain standard time at 620. So that's why we get recalculations right, um, you know, five minutes after the room opens. Now that's why we really open it at 6.15, just because we have action. We've got action at uh, 6.20, and then we have action at 7 o'clock for pit. And then if we're still around, we've got action at 7.30 for the equities to kind of give everything a little bit of energy.
No, I don't. Not one bit. I don't think we're moving the markets by any means. Yeah, Frank. That's our profit this morning. Minus a little bit of commission. So if I pull this up, it'll tell you exactly what we're what we're up to today. Yeah, 307, 92. Uh, it's the, I'm doing top step right now, but I use Ninja Broker or Ninja, Ninja Brokerage or whatever that one is. So we've got um, a couple minutes to equity open. We've got gold sitting right on our right on our strike line. It's pushed up, pulled back. We really didn't get much of a push up. That's what's holding me back here. Usually, when you get a couple three bars and then it pulls back, tags it or holds it, then it's game on. But we've got you know. This overbought going on, which is telling me that if this does break, excuse me, it's not going to go to the moon. So I'm not sure if any of you guys are in that crude trade still, but I did pull back 10 ticks, 34, six potential long in gold. I'm going to do eight. I'm going to do eight, which will be the confirmation candle long. I use my balls as targets because they self adjust based on volatility. So our target will be here at 37 for a runner. So bar close will be 36, confirmation candle 38, just to see if we're going to snap this swing high. So I'm going to take that order off. I'm just not, I'm just not feeling it. And I'm going to let this equity open, see what happens. I'm going to see if it makes its move and pulls back, we'll take the pullback. I just don't want to try to be a hero here and try to guess which way this is going to go because it's may not go anywhere and might slowly leak up and then roll over or vice versa. So order off on gold, no orders open it or right now. So we're just going to sit and wait. 
watch this and see if it pushes. We're uh, volume saying it's going to go this way. Smooth indicator says it's going to go that way. So it's probably best not to it. So Dave, um, just to answer your question, these targets based on volatility and range and a couple other things. So they adjust. Sometimes they're tight, sometimes they're spread out. And so that's where we take our take our profits or try to. Later, Hans. Oil um, pushed up here. Not sure if any of you guys are still in, but we did have a and tick pull back here off of this. It would have stopped me out. No, uh, let's see. Yeah, it would have right to the dang tick. But anyway, we would gotten target. So that was a good trade. Gold's not sure what it wants to do. Other than uh, kind of <clears throat> chop and hang around. So just so you know, I'm probably not going to be putting on any more trades anytime soon or today. I'm just going to kind of bank the bit and be cautious unless something totally presents itself. Um, kind of hang around for another 10 or 15 minutes and just see if anything major happens. But I'm thinking that we did pretty, you know, we did pretty dang good for how slow everything was. Anybody have any questions about anything? I guess, let me ask you this. Did any of you guys make any money today? Because that's the most important thing. That's good. Three thirteen one, Rick. Three thirteen one. All right, so here's our confluence. Let's see what it does here. So we've got new levels in gold. Plot at 7.30-ish. Depends on where the bar closes, but or when the bar closes, but 
So we take longs. We break out and pull back that way, right? Or fade that. So we've always got a couple, a couple plays in the playbook to handle those levels because that's where the high probability trades are. Hey, that's cool, Mojo. Thanks. Yeah, I can leave stuff up. Should help out. You like them? I'm really working to get these things out to you guys. It's not not become. It's not a headache by any means. It's a uh, um, just logistics, programming, and making everything, making sure everything's perfect. Because I want to um, have them be. A plus for you guys. So you can see it kind of hesitated here. Is it going to stop and reverse and just roll over and die? No, I don't know. Probably not, but if you're looking for targets or looking for to maximize your profits, then we'd be taking we'd be taking some profit here. And if it blows through it, then good stuff. And so I guess the minimum you can do is shore up your stop, protect any profit that you have. And then if it decides to you know, smoke through these lo this level or this confluence, then you'll be in good shape. But usually, you get hesitation, pull back, pull back enough to stop you out or make you uh, give up some of your profits. So we're kind of caught the mid here. So remember these levels, these strike lines. I call them cash lines, strike lines, because that's where we take our trades and that's where we make our money. Um, so we basically look for a pullback. We see what it does. If it fails, then we look to go short. If it doesn't and it pushes up, then we look for a pullback into the line, hold that level, and then one of these. That's what we look for. Or it can be opposite off of that. So I hope some of you guys caught this revert or um, continuation. I'm not thinking so. I took mine off. Um, but we made some decent profits today, so we can't be too picky about stuff. So gold's either going to fail here, roll over. Or it's going to break out and we're going to push up. The thing is, is since this range is so tight, our target's only 35. So it's only 10 ticks. 
So to keep that in mind. But we also have a T1 up here that's untouched. And that's your daily number. And then we have an untouched overnight. So we've got some over untouched numbers up here. And those you need to take into consideration too because first touch on those babies usually means there's going to be a reaction. I focus on whatever it gives me. Take fades or breaks out, breakouts. All right, so I'm gonna do this, force and flatten everything, put it in SIM, scrunch this down, give you a bit a little, little bit of all the levels. Wish y'all well. No, they're not pivots. They're um, levels based on volatility, time and um, structure. There's a bunch of different variables, but they work on all instruments. They're self-adjusting based on the instrument you're trading. So they're pretty sweet. Everybody have a great day. I'm gonna check out, happy Monday. See you tomorrow morning. Doesn't look like we have much news. So let me ask you guys this question. I've been looking at this. Let's watch gold here and see if it wants to pull back. I was just looking at the one up stuff and noticing that they have different profit splits, but um, you have to pay, you pay a monthly fee every month, regardless if you're funded or not, which is different than top step. I think. Yes, we're getting a little pullback. Thirty-five two would be an entry, but we've got your target at thirty-five six. So be cautious, is all I'm saying. So I guess um, we'll just we can talk about this one up thing later. I need to learn more about it. But I kind of like the idea of the only the one um, combine and then you're ready to rock and roll. So anyway, I'm going to check out. You guys have a killer day. See you in the morning. And at 36 even, there are 263 contracts of gold. So I'm just going to put this line here. Just so you know. All right, so... There are a few landmines on the way up here, so I would be cautious with with longs. Remembering 
this bigger bar is still over over hot. So anyway, it is what it is. You guys uh, have a great day. See you tomorrow. And I'll talk to you later. Thanks.